You know, I'm just amazed with working with youth. And working with youth is a challenge. Hi, my name is Blaine Van, and welcome to the voice of the church in Henderson. You know, when I work around youth, especially young men, I get excited because I see the potential that is in youth and potential that's in young men. Because I remember me being young, you know, 100 years ago. And when I see these young people and I see the potential that's locked up inside, I want to do everything I can to help them achieve that which is trapped inside and help them to believe for the best in the life, no matter what race they are or economic background that they come from. I want them to be more. I want them to climb higher. I want them to go farther. And so when working with youth, I'm very conscious of speaking into their lives and demonstrate in front of them the love of Christ. And the love of Christ I'm talking about is having myself demonstrate patience, having myself demonstrate um, wisdom, having myself demonstrate restraint. Because we know that youth are none of those things in the beginning, but we know that they shall be. And because we know that they shall be, we are encouraged to do the things that we have to do. And not just for a show, but we need to manifest maturity and wisdom in the secret place and in the closet. And to be prayed up. And we need to pray for them. The youth that we see today is probably the most unprayed for group of people I've ever seen on this planet. And that's because Many of them are living in homes that have been broken. Uh, many of them across, you know, uh, economics and, and racial uh, lines, uh, living in divorce. Drugs are easily available. Pornography is easily available. Anger, hostility, and violence is easily available. The games are full of um, violence and sex and revenge and, you know, none of it um, speaks of the things of God or the way of God. And so they are bombarded with just hellish um, temptations and to become children of the devil. And they don't start off that way, but through the years, the erosion of moral insight and speaking to lives just become became less and less. And then adults say stuff like, well, they're going to do it anyway. And so they might as well do it in my home. So parents are letting the children drink. Parents are letting the children have sex in the homes, in the bedroom. All saying, well, at least they're doing it here and not in the street. But I want to challenge that thinking and say that what I do is that I pray how to speak to youth. And then I might have a three or four or five of them in my mind. And then I ask for a word of the Lord for them. Because the word of God breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. In other words, the hard places that have been developed through separation of the parents, through the father being incarcerated, through the mother being on drugs, through the mother working two, three jobs to keep the family af afloat so they're not there, through uh, parents and guardians not going to the games, through having lack of money at the family level so now they can't participate uh, with some of the extra activities at school. And so they need a word from heaven. And how they get that word from heaven is through adults that can tap into the things of God. Um, the youth need men and women of God. They need men who can tap in into the heartbeat of the Father and speak that into their lives. They need a woman that can lay her head on the breast of Jesus, hear his heartbeat, 
and begin to speak that in their lives. They need people in their lives who has a real connection with the Heavenly Father and not a real connection with religion. They need prophets and prophetess to be ignited with the fire of God and who are sharpened in the discernment and to speak into their lives. Now, the key is you might never get a chance to speak to a group of youth, uh, nor will I even challenge you to even think that way. The best way is to use the gift of exhortation, which literally means to call one aside. This is the strategy. And if you can get this strategy today, you will see remarkable changes in the youth and remarkable changes in this generation. If we adults, men and women, men and women of God, will follow the way of the Lord in exhortation. You know, there was a woman at the well, and Jesus spoke to her one-on-one. -on -one. The one-on-one -on -one is one of the weapons to use for the life of these millennials and these youth. So, you find one or youth that is drawn to you. Um, you might have one in your youth group. You might have one in your class. You might have one in your neighborhood. You might have one in your family. And they don't mind talking to you. Uh, they don't mind telling them, telling you their secrets or what they're going through. Or they don't just don't mind just hanging around you. So this is the first one you know, you notice. Then you pray and ask God to give you a word, to give you insight into their lives. Once you do that, God will drop a word, an exhortation, a phrase, a ideal into your spirit. Then you take that word, you call the youth alongside, and no matter they're in a crowd, and say, God, speak to you for a second, just for a moment. And then when they come over, speak the word of the Lord in their life. Speak the word of the Lord over them. Because the words that you speak are spirit in their life. They're not your words, but they are words that you echoed from heaven. Uh, you want to speak the voice of God into the spirit man. You want to speak the word of God over them, into the soul, into the mind. And the Lord told me that if you can do this, if you will do this, that it takes about three years for that word to germinate. So if you can do something like that, if you see an opportunity to do that, Know that you might not see a change immediately, but that seed will be planted. But not the seed of opinion, not the seed of trying to be cool, not the seed of trying to be hip, but the seed of the Lord, the seed of his word striking that soil and rain on them. Don't be long-winded, but just speak them and encourage them in the things of God. Encourage them that they have a future. Encourage a young man that he's going to live and not die. Encourage a young girl that the bigger and brighter things over the horizon, that you might not see it, but it's there. Encourage them. Tell them. Let them know. And by doing that, they will hear the voice of the Father. They will feel the love of Christ, the agape of Christ, and they will know that you care. This will give them a sense of belonging. This would give them a sense that someone out there knows that they are alive and that somebody is watching over them. Hi, my name is Blaine Van. This has been The Voice from the Church in Henderson. God bless.